Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. Let's get right into it. Today's theme, creating with other people. Creating with other people. How many of you have got uh, end results or creations that involve other people? I'd say, I'd say most of us, eh? I mean, there's not many things you think of and you go, yeah, I'm the only one involved. You know, like if you want to have a successful business, you've got customers, you've got staff, you've got platforms. If you want to have a uh, build your dream home, you've got, you know, builders and architects and, you know, bricklayers, all, all sorts of things, hey? If you want to create a relationship with someone, obviously you've got that other someone, but then you've also got everyone else who has opinions about things. So would you, uh, would you agree that most of the time when you're creating, uh, you know, there's someone else involved, even if it's just someone else's opinion. And, uh, and, and, and most of the time, it's, it's there are others that are there to play a part in, in your creation. And, and, and what's, what's really interesting is that a lot of times the, the human interaction can cause a lot of chaos in our creation. Who would agree with that? You know, for me... When I was uh, creating, for for the, the longest time, I would have I'd have challenges with other people. You know, I would have uh, people who I would pay as consultants or staff or mentors who, you know, said one thing and and then the other thing would happen. You know, they wouldn't they wouldn't do do what it was, and I felt like a victim. And then other times I'd have people that I was trying to help, and uh, I'd feel like I helped and helped and helped and helped and. Uh, and then I was underappreciated or even resentful that they didn't see how much I wanted to help or how much I cared. And then there's other times when I'm trying to create something and the other person just doesn't even want to engage in that creation. And I, and, uh, I know for a lot of us, when it comes to, to family or, or co-workers, uh, we can become very frustrated when you see it one way and, and others, you know, they don't see it that way. And so I think it's a very, very uh, important uh, topic is to understand how we create with others and, and uh, to understand that every human on the planet has free will to create what they choose. So today's session is actually, when I say create with others, I, I'm really meaning other adults. Uh, I know a lot of parents on here will go, great, awesome. I want to create this for kids and these sort of things, but I really want to talk about creating other adults and you know even if those are adult children that's that's fine but but with with people that you know that have really got free will to create for themselves because it's a very important thing that if if you take someone else's free will away from them um they and they're not allowed to choose to not engage with what you want uh, you're seeing them as powerless and, uh, and they will unconsciously know that and it, it won't work out. So it's going to be a great session. By end of today's session, I think it'll become very, very clear uh, to you about how to, to have others uh, work uh, in hitting end results with even more clarity. And, and this, this was really uh, inspired by a few conversations that I've had uh, recently uh, over the course of the last weekend event. And then also in our Superconscious Creator course. So I think it's a very uh, timely conversation. And I think it's going to be a really, really good one. So just before we begin and, and I get into some of the teaching points and then into uh, the process, I'd like you to think of one of your end results that may be uh, oscillating a little bit or is even not moving at all. And you kind of feel it's because of someone else. You kind of feel, well, that's not moving because I don't have enough clients or that's not moving because my coworker or my, my husband or my wife or my kid or my friend. And, uh, and I just want you to notice, does, does everyone have um, one? Yes, yeah, so someone says uh, that they can't travel to some place because of the other person is actually a government. And, uh, and that's interesting. So, so can everyone um, just acknowledge, has everyone got something in their mind when they think about um, you know, I want to create this and it, it's really, it, 
I wish other people would just like, let me have it. Like I want to make lots of money. So why can't people just buy from me, you know, or I want to have a business that works without me. Why can't my staff just do what's needed? <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to have a hard time finding something that there's someone else that's kind of upsetting their end result. Yeah. So that their spouse isn't on the same journey. Um, you know, oh, I'm going to get to it, Nina. Cool. So can everyone think of one? Just, just, is it, is it okay? Give me a yes or do the little hand up icon or make some noise or something just so I can make sure that everyone's had a moment to find at least one uh, that, that they can just use as, as I go through this, uh, some of this teaching. Cool. Cool. Okay, good. Looks like we've got uh, most of you saying yes. Yep. D rock sent me a duck, which um, I'm assuming that's a yes. Very good. Good stuff. Alison says, I'm having trouble with this. Okay, so what do you think about your results? And then ask yourself, why is it that I can't have that? Is it because, because others aren't um, buying? Are they, are they not moving? Is it because, is there a reason? Is there someone else that's stopping it? Yeah, and that's the question. And maybe you don't, so I don't want you to project, but maybe you literally don't have this. So then you get to sit back and, and listen. And if you don't have one, I really don't want you to go try to look for it and find it too hard. I think most of us will, uh, but I don't want you to go looking. And the reason is, is, is because if you don't, you don't, that's fine. You'll be able to learn for when you do, because I think in the future you will find um, this session is one to return to. Does that make sense? So, you know, if you don't, you don't, that's fine. Brilliant. But it's still going to be a very, very important session. A very important session. Okay, so the, the first thing to acknowledge is when you when, when you are creating is to realize that everyone has a heart. Everyone has a heart. So so as you're creating, everyone has a heart. Your clients, your staff, your co-workers, your your spouse, your parents, your kids, everyone has a heart. And and what what I want you to take from that is everyone has fears, everyone has dreams, and everyone has has wounds. You know, everyone has wounds. Everyone has uh, unconscious self or self-conscious uh, agendas that they're trying to solve. So I want you first to acknowledge that, you know, yourself, you have a lot of things that you do that are to solve, solve problems or how you feel maybe not totally fulfilled. So, so you have that. So it's very um, clear to also observe that others have that. True, hey? They, they have a heart. A heart. So someone, someone's just really trying to prove me wrong. And they've said unless they're a psychopath or a narcissist. And, you know, if you want to play the game of, of, of blaming them for that, and, and uh, that's fine, but I also want you to acknowledge they have a heart. They also have dreams. They also have goals. They've also had an upbringing and that they have a heart. Does that, does that make sense? Because, you, you know, you, you can try to disagree with that, but I think it's a very sad world if you don't acknowledge that, that that person is more like you than not. Everyone has a heart. And, and, that's, and that's just, it's just true. And, and so as we're, as we're creating, we have to realize that uh, there are different modes of relationship, okay? There are different modes of relationship. And we teach this in uh, transformation in more detail. The, the first mode of relationship looks like this. And this is codependent. This is when each person, person one and person two, relies on the other person to fill them up. Okay, codependent mode. Um, Kamala, you are trying to prove me wrong. You are. You are. You're saying you're, you're trying to to prove the point wrong, and and. And I just want to acknowledge that is what you're doing. I mean, I'm reading it. You are. You are trying to prove me wrong. And so people, people have a heart. That's the premise. And, and they have hopes and dreams and desires and fears. But if you fight for the fact that there are these, these really screwed up people and you want to fight for it, you're going to find them. And, and, I, and the reason why I'm, I, I'm so, so you, Everyone has a heart. Everyone has a heart. It's just true. And by having a heart, it means that they have fears, that they have dreams, that they have wishes, that they have wounding. You know, everyone has wounding. Everyone has a heart. 
And uh, and you you can have your own beliefs. I don't I don't mind. But I promise, if you have the belief that everyone has a heart, even those that are the most wounded, uh, you know, you're going to find their heart. You will. Your assumptions your assumptions will drive your uh, your view in the world, and your view in the world will drive you to certain places and decisions. And uh, and that's a very very important thing. Okay, and everyone's allowed to have their own opinion. So, so you have yours if you like. So the, the first mode is codependent. And uh, a codependent mode is when uh, you're, you're getting filled up by someone else. You're codependent. You say, I can't have this without you. They're not able to, to live separate. And this is, this is the first mode, is that each person needs the other person for something. You see, they're dependent on something. They need, and, and what, if they don't have that other person, if that other person was to leave, well, well then, you know, they, they lose a bit of them. They look like this, you see? They don't have that piece, right? They, lo they lose a bit, they're codependent. So that, that's obviously a, 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 way, a way to be, is to be codependent. And uh, it's funny, because, you know, you hear those, those sayings of this person completes me. So, so codependent mode is, is one. The, the next mode of uh, relationship is control. And this is when there is one person who's bigger and then someone who's smaller. So this is one, uh, one is the outside and two is the one inside. So it's controlled. The person, one person is bigger, playing the bigger role, and then one person is playing the smaller role. Does that make sense? So first is codependent, and then this is controlled. Okay, then there's the opposite. Okay, and so there's the, the controlled um, way of being and that when you are controlled and then there's how you're in control. So you're the shaded area here. I won't waste time coloring it all in. But you're the, you're the outside. Everyone get that, not the inside. So that's a, that's a real interesting way to be. So that's um, you're controlled. Okay, and then this is when you're in control. Now, every relationship that you have, you're going to be in one of these places. Okay, one of these places. The, uh, the, the, next, the next way is to be uh, aloof. You guys gonna be able to see this? Yeah, aloof. So aloof is there's no, there's no connection at all. That's aloof. There's just two things that are completely uh, separate. Okay, that's aloof, not connected. And, and many people uh, do do live life aloof from others. There's there's no connection. And so th there's there's one other, and this is this is functional. Okay, and functional looks a lot like aloof, but they're just touching. And it's when one person gives energy to the next person, gives it to the next person. I hope you guys can see that. Let me just check. Let me just move my, uh, do you see that? And so this last one here, this is uh, functional. Can someone write those out for me? So codependent, controlled, in control, aloof, and functional. So, in every relationship, these are these are the ways that you can be. In fact, I might just um, share my screen since um, since I've got it here for you guys. There you go. That's much better. There they are. Okay, so that's better, isn't it? So so that you guys can just just see it that way. Uh, so does everyone, does everyone get that? So in any relationship, you're you're in one of one of these areas here. Okay, uh, the first one is codependent. Um, when everyone uh, needs or the person needs the others, there is controlled when you are con the one that's inside. There's control, there's aloof, and then there's functional where each one's just giving to the other. So, so what I've noticed with a lot of uh, a lot of people, and when they have challenges in relationship, okay is the first thing is they might be in a codependent mode. So they're saying, uh, I can't feel this way unless you're a certain way. I think a lot of parents are like that with their kids. Unless, unless you know, I'm not going to feel like a good parent unless you're doing a certain thing. They're dependent. You see, they can't feel as though they're a good um, spouse unless that other person's doing it. 
that they don't feel it. Does that make sense? The feeling is dependent on another person. See, a lot of people in relationship, uh, you know, they, they can't be happy unless the other person is happy. They depend on it, you see? And now let me ask you the question, is the first one powerful? Are they a powerful creator? Where's the power? Yes or no? Are they in power? No, they're not in power, are they? They're not in power because there's a part that is governed by, by someone else. So there's another place many of us can feel controlled, like we are controlled, like we are where the small and something else is bigger. Many of us have this relationship at the moment to society. We feel controlled, hey? Is it where's the small and it's, and it's bigger? And the governments are deciding to play that role. We're playing this role. How many feel controlled in places where there's things they can or can't do? They, they feel that way. Then there's the next one, which is in control, which is you bigger the other person. Again, parents do this too. You have to, you have to do it like this in, in control. And I'm talking about parents of adult kids. Eh? It is, uh, and you see this in relationships. By the way, you see a lot of this here in, um, in workplaces. You know, this is the boss, right? And the boss is holding the control. And then how does everyone feel? How many of you have ever had a boss like that? Eh? If you had a boss like that, that's the bigger one and you're the smaller one, yeah. And you feel like this, don't you? You feel like this. It's no, it's no good, eh? It's no, it's no good. And so, so a lot of us go, well, I don't want to be codependent. I don't want to be controlled. I don't want to be in control. So we say, well, we'll just separate from it. Hey, we'll just, we'll just separate. Isn't it interesting? And so, so they said, well, you know, we'll just, we'll just separate and we'll become aloof. And, and aloof, uh, is, is that powerful? When there's someone you want to be in relationship with, but, uh, you, you know, you've, you've run away from it. Is that, is that really powerful when you just give up? Because a lot of people say, well, you know, they left, so I'll just leave. Well, they're controlled. So, so they, most people will end up just saying, well, well, screw it. I'll just run away from it. But there, there's this, this final one, the functional one. And, and the functional one is, is when uh, you, you give just the right amount of, of energy and then you wait for the energy back. You see? You give and then get back. And then you give and then you get back. But see, in the functional mode, you don't just give and give and give and give and give, you see, because it's functional. Both, both are understanding the dance of the relationship. There's a give, there's a receive, there's a give and there's a receive. Does that make sense? Is it's, it's functional, it's here. It's this. And there's this energy that's that's created when it's done, but 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 do you see that that's not codependent? It's that you're both giving, and there's a third thing created, which is the two together. And, and so functional is actually where you want to be. Hey, does everyone agree with that? That's actually where you want to be. Where you know, and I was talking with a uh, with one of our um, team members, Dylan, last night, and I was saying, you know, everyone's winning. You know, the clients are winning, you're winning, we're winning, everyone's giving. No one's dependent on each other. You know, no one's controlled, right? No one's, no one's like this. No one's separate. It's that everything's working. You know, everyone's happy, you know. And this is our goal in our company, by the way, is that, you know, you guys get energy from us. You give energy back from us and then we give and you give. And same with my staff. I give, they give. And it's like that. Everyone's just happy. Hey. Who agrees? That's a good way to be. And that's the way that I want to be in relationship with you guys. So you'll notice when I coach you, I'm aiming for this. I want to give and I expect to give back and then I give. And, and that's how I want to coach. And, and sometimes I want to say this is how it is and then wait for feedback. But, but I'm not going to try to be a controlling coach, right? Because then you'll be like that. I don't want you to be dependent on me. <laughs> That'd be terrible. And, uh, and I don't want you to, you know, feel like you've got no connection with me at all. And so this is the place that we want to be. And it took me a very long time to understand this. I spent, uh, I spent years, uh, you know, being in, in the drama triangle. 
And uh, how, how many of you know the drama triangle? Who knows the drama triangle? Move, just move this up, the drama triangle. So the drama triangle is very interesting. I'm just going to stand up to talk to you about it because the drama triangle plays out in, in all our movies and we, we see it again and again and again and again and again and again and again. So there's three aspects to any drama triangle. Okay, so, so you know, you have the victim. Uh, from the, the victim, you have the rescuer or the savior. Rescuer or um, savior. And so you have the victim, they're the rescuer, the savior, and then you have the persecutor. Persecutor. I know my writing's terrible. So could someone write those um, those those three in? So you know, you have the victim. Um, you could call this the the villain. You could call this the hero. The victim, villain, hero, whatever way you want to call it. Okay. Uh, I'd love you guys to um, someone type them in for me. So so you you realize these um, really really well. And, and what, what I found is I would play different roles and uh, in relationships when I was in a codependent mode or if, so if I was in any of those dysfunctional modes, okay, I'd be playing one of these three and who's noticed this with themselves. If I was in one of these modes, so if, if I was in this control mode, I might be playing hero. Hero says, uh, you know, I'm going to control what you can do. Or I might be in a codependent mode where, where I'm saying, you, you know, I'm the victim, you need to help me. Or I might feel that I'm a complete victim, right? So, so, so I realized like with this, um, with this drama triangle of how it was playing out. And, uh, and, and how many of you guys see yourself in these places, right? So, so you see yourself and maybe you're playing, you know, you're playing the victim role, like someone else is, you know, someone else is being evil, there, or, or maybe you know you're you're the hero that's coming in and saying that person's a bad person, or maybe you're the one that's being seen as the bad person, and someone else feels like you're being that they're the victim of you, and then someone else is trying to come in and uh, and save you. And this is a this is a basics, you know, sort of um, you know Joseph Campbell. You, you can see it in the hero's journey and stuff like this. It's a it's a very important. So so the 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 persecutor the or the villain. OK, the villain that they say that they're like this. They say, I'm OK. You're not OK. I'm in charge and I get what I want. So the villain is criticizing or blaming or labeling or putting down and uh, and they, they have a, a real big dysfunction. OK, so the, the, the persecutor, the, the villain, it, it doesn't that they, they don't let other people have their power. They don't let other, they say, you should be like this. You know, husband, you should be like this. That's being the, that's being the persecutor. You're not powerful. You you should get up and run more. You don't eat the right foods. You know, you should be in this work. You know, we should have a relationship. Why, you know, why, you know, they say to the adult kids, you know, why aren't you wanting to hang out with me? The persecutor. And do you know what the, the persecutor is really saying? You're not powerful. You're not allowed to do life your way. Does that make sense? They say, yeah, you're not allowed to do it that way. And, and as, as Sarah, one of our certified coaches says, they're a power thief. They steal power. They say, you're not allowed to, they even say, you're not even allowed to be unhappy. You say, you're not allowed to be unhappy. <laughs> I mean, that has to be the lowest level of stealing someone's power. They're not even allowed to be sad, you know? What else, you know what I mean? They don't let them, um, they don't let them. And many of us who go through spiritual transformations, we should go around telling people they're not allowed to be themselves. Hey, you know, you, you know, you should do recode. You, you shouldn't be sad. You do, 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 do. So, so that's the, the persecutor. So, so the victim, the victim says, I'm not okay. You're okay. So the victim goes, well, it's me. It's something wrong with me. And so, so the victim says, I can't do things without you, you know, like I need your help. I'm a victim of you. You, you have the power. I don't, you see, and, and, uh, and, and the victim, the, the, the kind of payoff is they don't have to do things that seem difficult. Like it's much easier for the victim to say, oh, 
that bad person ripped me off instead of realizing that they they were the one that signed the contract and engaged in it. They're the one that chose that person. Oh, uh, you know, he was such a narcissist. Well, you got in the relationship with him and you didn't end it. Do you see, do you see the payoff of the victim? Hey, they don't have to take responsibility that they the vic that they created it. It's much easier to say, but this person, this was the bad person. Like they just miraculously turned up. Makes sense? Is I, you know, we we're having a conversation before. Someone was really disagreeing with me. Some people are just narcissists, and if that's true, well, you just don't engage with those people. You know, you don't be a victim of them if, if that's what's true and for, for that person. So, so the the behavior of the victim is they complain that they're helpless and they 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 kind of pretend that they're incompetent and they kind of like they nearly have insomnia to how they got there like how did i get ripped off how did how did i meet another person like this i uh, i just i don't i can't believe it they just everyone they just want to play victim there's a payoff hey there's just a payoff and 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 that's the that's the victim and so and and the the real challenge i guess for this person is at the end of the day, people get really tired of hanging around um, a, a victim who always has someone else that's meaning they can't do it. They just get tired of it. Hey, uh, oh, I don't want to, we don't want to hang. So they don't want to hang out. So then there's the, the rescuer or the hero. And, and so this is another, like the rescuer always says, you know, hey, I'm okay and you're not okay. And, uh, and the, the message is, is basically, you're not powerful, I'll sort it out. So victim, I'll sort it out for you. I'll go sort out that, that villain over there. I know better. You can't handle it. You can't handle it. And, and so the, the payoff, the, the rescuer, here's what's interesting. Saviors and heroes and rescuers feel really good to save and rescue and, and be a hero. But you know what a hero always needs? People who need saving. They always have to have a victim and there always has to be a bad guy. So those who want to orient to some sort of hero, there always has to be a bad guy and always has to be somebody that's, um, um, you know, being hurt. And so are they powerful? Hey, they're not powerful because they just keep saying they need a world to be in pain and problem for them, them to feel good. And, and, and that's their payoff. They feel needed and wanted to swoop in and save. And, and honestly, that, that was that to me, that was the best thing. I, I wanted to save people, you know. Uh, I would never have written a book that says you're not broken. Instead, my worldview was, well, everyone's broken and they need me to come in and save them. And that, that was that was a big payoff. And what I realized, and that was the same for my team. I was like, everyone needed me. So my business wouldn't grow bigger than me because everyone needed me because they were, they were just small. And, and it's, just, it's just being honest. And you, you see it. You see it. And as Coach Dixie just put in here very well, is that the hero needs the victim even more than the persecutor. And, and so the problem with the rescuer or the hero they actually end up being more of a victim than the victim because they take on everyone else's problems. And then they end up getting resentful to all these weak people. And they don't, they wonder why they're not creating a the life they want because they're just taking on all these, these problems. And so the rescue is fixing, telling, giving solutions, taking over, and, and they don't really have a life of their own. Their life is to save everyone else because everyone else is powerless. You see that? So, so th this, this role here is everyone's powerless and I'm going to come and save them. Th this role here is, is, is this, someone else is more powerful that they've got my power and, and, uh, and they play, play the victim. And then this, this one here is very criticizing. They, they don't have a life either. They're too busy criticizing someone else. And, and can you see that none of these have power? And that's why it's called the drama triangle. And by the way, we're all, all of them, aren't we? We're all, all of them. There's, we, don't get to, we don't get to escape them. We've all been all of them, and, and we can just get over that. You've all been all of them. We've all been the victim. We've all, we've all been the villain that's been critical of someone else and, 
and, and pointed out their inadequacies or in those. And we've, we've all been the savior. We've all been all of them. You don't, you don't get to miss it, but, but that's the drama process. And, uh, and so here's what I want you to get is, is in your creation with other people, as you're creating, just acknowledge for a second, like how are you in relationship with them? How are you in relationship with them? Are you in a drama triangle? Are you, are you trying to save them? Are you going, no one wants to buy from me? Have you given all the power away? Or are you being critical? These idiots won't buy from me. Like, how are you being? Important to acknowledge that, but also important to not acknowledge, you know, the, the stuff we talked about earlier about where, how are you in relationship with them? You see? Are you codependent? Do you need something from them? Are you being controlled? Okay. Or are you in control? Like, how is it? We want to be in this functional mode. We want to be in this functional mode. So it's very, very, very powerful. So, so as, you're, as you're thinking about this choice, as you're thinking about this choice, I just want you to acknowledge and ask yourself, you know, how are you in relationship with these other people? How are you in relationship? Are you in a functional way? Are you most likely not? Hey? And realizing, well, I'll give them energy, but if the energy doesn't come back, what do I need to do? Find someone else to put energy into? Or am I just running away? Am I aloof? Or am I trying to say, it's got to be this way? Am I trying to control? Am I being controlled? Am I codependent? If they're not a certain way, am I sad? How am I in relationship? Hey, Chris here again. I hope you really enjoyed that session. Obviously, it was streamed live to our Magnet Mind Masterclass uh, coaching program. If you'd like to be involved in that program, please do reach out. Uh, we do have spaces you can uh, apply for and you can join. So do let us know if it's something for you. And again, thank you so much for your support. Subscribe, like, and share this content so we can reach millions of people just like you and help them become conscious creators. Have a great day. Stay super conscious.